So there's been a verse which I believe God has laid on my heart for many months now. Um, going as far back as July, um, when I was actually on a ferry coming back from Shetland Camp. Um, and I remember sitting on the boat and my friends were all asleep, it was quite late. And I had a blank page in the back of my notebook, which I didn't know what to do with, so I decided to draw a picture. Next time, um, I was having a conversation with one of my cousins in the living room. And we were speaking about things that were bothering us. And we spoke about the verse. And that verse had to be the same verse. And the next morning we woke up and both of us found that on our daily verse was that very verse. And then next, um, I think it was just a few days ago, my mum had been to a Christian cafe in Glenrothes. And some of you might know about it. I've never been to go. Um, and she was showing me pictures of the inside and on the wall was that same verse. So I believe God has laid this verse on my heart. And I'll be able to share it with you today. So if we could just turn to Matthew chapter 11. And just for information, I'm reading from the ESV. So it won't be a KGB. So if you can, I'm sure you can follow along just fine. So that's Matthew 11. And we'll be reading from verse 28. It says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And just in connection with that verse, we can come to one more in Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, and reading verse 1. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit to a yoke of slavery. So, all of us feel weary and burdened at times in our lives. We all know that personally. And if you've never felt weary or burdened about anything, then I would think that was quite unusual. Um, so, this can be many things, especially the time we're living in now, quite difficult. And it's winter time, gas prices are high, electricity is expensive. There's a lot of things that weigh on you. And these are things we tend to worry about. So, and there's, there's many other things as well that we could become bothered about, whether that's sickness in our own health, perhaps relationships which are damaged in some way, could be work, could be your studies, um, or maybe even you're aware of something in your life. So in the first passage we read, um, you might have thought, oh, that seems quite nice, but if one born there, I'm not sure what it is, and that would be a yoke. In the Bible, um, this verse here is speaking of, it's a wooden cross piece that goes on the backs of two animals which carry a cart or a plow. And if you can think about the fact, if you were carrying this cart or this plow and you had a huge thing behind you, it would probably weigh quite a significant amount and it would slow you down. It would be hard to carry. Um, you know, and it, life can often be like that. I think we can often feel like that. There's things attached to our lives which burden us which worry us, and they weigh you down, and they hurt you physically, and they can hurt you mentally. One of the greatest things we have to bear in our lives, and sometimes it's, we're not even aware of, is sin. Sin is something that um, we do all the time. It's not something we ever go a day without doing really. And sin varies. It can be a passing thought which isn't quite right, or maybe you lie to someone, maybe you hurt someone. It doesn't always have to be something that's crime or punish over the jail symptoms. Sin comes in many forms and it affects all of us. And we know that. And if we say we've never lied, we've never done this, we've never done that, then I don't think we're being entirely honest with ourselves. So in life, we often go through times of difficulties, as I just said, and perhaps right now, you're going through something yourself. And you yourself are in fact seeking rest. So I've read this verse for you, and this is a verse which in fact offers and promises rest. It says, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The person speaking in this verse is in fact the Lord Jesus, God's son. I think you'll find in this world where there's so much turbulence, you've got so many figures in government, people you want to trust, people you want 
fix the problems that exist. Unfortunately, there's never anyone you really can trust. There's never anyone that's really consistent. Everyone here fails. It's the nature of man. We do fail. But there is one, one man who came to this earth who never failed, who was entirely consistent, and in whom was no sin. And that is the one man that I believe we can trust. It says here, come to me. You know, the Lord Jesus is someone you can trust, but it requires a willingness. This world has largely rejected the Lord Jesus and don't want anything to do with him. And we see the repercussions of that attitude where we live now. There's a lot of sin going on and a lot of it is now made public and it's accepted. Um, but the Lord Jesus was someone who, in whom was no sin. And that is why he's someone we can trust, because all he did was love. He loved everyone, and in him was love. But you need to come to him. And that's what I encourage today. The Lord Jesus in this verse, the first part of it is really split into two. They come to me all who labor and heavy laden. This is, in fact, an offering of salvation. Salvation is a free gift. And you might be wondering, well, what am I being saved from? What you're being saved from is a lost eternity without God. There's nothing in this world that can offer you peace and rest. You might find it temporarily through being helped in a situation. Perhaps you're in debt and you've been given money and you've been able to pay that debt off and you've got some temporary ease or some temporary satisfaction. But it's nothing permanent. And nothing in this world will ever bring you permanent rest and permanent peace. And the Lord Jesus is the only one that can offer you that. And that offer comes in the gift of salvation, which is entirely free for everyone. It says, come to me all. There's another verse, John chapter 3, verse 16, which you'll all know of. I hope so. Um, or most of you, perhaps. And it's, um, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall have everlasting life. And that's a slightly paraphrase. I can remember it off my head. Um, but it's that whosoever and the all in this verse are the same. And it's because salvation is available to all. It doesn't matter what you've done, who you are, even what you did today before you came here. Everyone is offered the same gift. So the second part of the verse then. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What the Lord Jesus offers is once you come into the blessing of salvation, you're offered peace and rest with God because you're made right with God. And the reason we're made right with God is because the Lord Jesus died for you. He gave his life for you so that he could cover your sins. The problem with our sin was that it kept us distant from God because God is a holy God. He's a just God, and in order for God to be just, um, he can't have sin in his sight. And that's because the sin contradicts the commandments he gave. None of us have ever gone all our lives without breaking one of the commandments, at least one. And that's the one thing that keeps us away from God because none of us could keep his perfect standards. So without the Lord Jesus, we were away from God. But God loved us so much, as we heard in John chapter 3, verse 16, that he sent his only begotten son. So the Lord Jesus came from heaven, he came to earth, and he sacrificed himself here to cover the cost of our sin. So it's on the basis of his blood that we come into the blessing of salvation, and that's why you need to come to him, because he's the only way you can ever be right with the Father and be granted eternal life. So in the second half of this verse, he then offers that peace and that rest that comes with being right with God. And it's wonderful to think that it's so simple in essence. You don't have to do anything. There's no number of works you need to do. You don't need to be, you don't need to be an upstanding member of your society that we hope you would be, and you don't need to do a certain amount of charity hours and all these things. There's no requirement. The only thing you need to do is accept. And that is it. And that is why it's so simple. And often that's the one thing that confuses us so much because it is so simple. But you can do it right now where you're sitting in your seat. You can just ask the Lord Jesus in prayer 
You can ask for the forgiveness of your sins and repent of your sins, and you can be saved now where you are. So, second verse I read was in Galatians chapter 5. And this is for, for those who are now saved. And Paul lays a charge in this letter. And he says, For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand there, stand firm therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Once we come into the goodness of salvation, we're set free from all the sin, all, all, all the sin that we were born with. It doesn't mean that any of us are perfect. I'm not perfect in the fact. Lots of things I do wrong, and I suppose I fail every day. But we now have a new power which comes with salvation. Because we've accepted the Lord Jesus and invited him into our lives, what happens is God gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit then comes and dwells within us. And he convicts our hearts of what's right and what's wrong. So because of that, we now have the power to turn away from the things which we would have done before, which were perhaps wrong, whether that's addiction. The things, many things you can be addicted to in this world was an issue of gambling, an issue of drink. It's lots of things, lots of vices that keep people far from God. But because of the work Christ on the cross, we are set free from that. And again, like I said, it doesn't mean we never do it. But it just means we have the ability to turn away from these things and to serve God. And in doing so, you will find rest and peace for your soul. So, the, the, the reason for that, the reason we do still fail, is because while you have that new life and that new spirit within you, it still resides in the old body. But the difference is we now have Christ, whereas we didn't before. So if we guard our hearts and put our fleshly desires aside, we will have that rest and that joy that is promised to us. And that is a promise. And God makes promises and he is faithful to keep them. So I was just thinking, you know, the time of year we are now, it's, it's Christmas time. Um, we're in that season. And when you think about what Christmas really is, it's celebrating the birth of the Lord Jesus. At its core, that's what it is. We do cover it up with gift giving, Christmas tree, pencil, and other things. And it's all, it, the, the meaning has really been lost here in this country of what Christmas really is, and that is the birth of the Lord Jesus. But it's interesting because when you think about other birthdays, such as your own, or a family member's, or a friend's, it's always someone who's alive. You wouldn't celebrate the birthday of a dead person because, well, they're not there to enjoy. But don't you just think it's interesting that we still celebrate Christmas every single year and have done for a very long time. And the reason for that is because the Lord Jesus lives. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a celebration at all. And that is also why you can rely on his promise because he's a living saviour. A lot of religions put their faith and trust in dead prophets and dead figures. But Christianity is centered around Christ. And that's why it's called Christianity, because it's Christ and his living. So I would just encourage each and every one of you, if you're not already saved, I would just really, really encourage you to just come to the Lord Jesus now and just bring your sin and your bonds before him, repent of them, and you can be granted everlasting life and that peace and that rest that we read of. Just trust that God will as well. Lord Josh, We'll, we'll, we'll say the first two and the last two verses 
174, I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Right, right now, is really one way down that I head upon my hills. I think it goes to down and tree. So we'll sing the first two, the last two verses, then Josh. John chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 3. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? And he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born. And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And if we could turn as well to Second Corinthians chapter five. <clears throat> and just verse seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature or a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And that will do us now uh, for the reader. We trust that the Lord will bless it. <clears throat> but we will go to a few scriptures here and there, hopefully, if I remember. But like Jack was saying, we're getting to that point in the year where uh, we're thinking of those new things we're thinking of, a time of gift giving, and as we're approaching the end of the year, we're looking back, or at least I've been looking back uh, on my life through the last year. I've been wondering exactly what sort of things I've done that have been good, things I've regretted, uh, things I believe I should have done. And I feel like that's the case with most people, uh, where we start to evaluate where we went in the right direction or where we went wrong. Through that year. Um, and quite often that's what we use to value ourselves. That's the way we uh, see our worth uh, in the present moment. We look at how we've done, we look at what we've done um, and the manner in which we've done it. And we look back and we think either, oh, I've done 
excellent. I've done so well this year, Paul. You look back and say, I have been absolutely beautiful this year. Um, so we're quite uh, self deprecating people in Scotland, or at least I am. Uh, I know that Jack has quite a lot of his mock himself endlessly. Um, but when it comes to God's valuation um, of us, he doesn't see the past mistakes. He doesn't want to look at the things you've done wrong. He simply wants to look at you and give you this new gift that Jack spoke on, that new gift uh, of salvation. Uh, actually, if we turn to Romans chapter 6 quickly, uh, there's a reference right there. Uh, Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, which is at the end of the chapter. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, or rather the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. <coughs> so that is exactly what God wants to give us, but thing about a gift is a gift has to be accepted um, you can't just force you to take this gift um, it's something that Jack said you have to you have to reach out and take for yourself um, and you'd be perfectly uh, within your right to uh, turn away a gift but personally I couldn't see any possible way where you could look at a gift where your sins are forgiven you're given eternity with God, you're given peace, you're given that rest that Jack spoke of. I can't fathom how anyone could look at that and think that isn't for me. Um, there's been plenty of times uh, through my life, both before uh, trusting in the Lord and after, where <clears throat> I've looked at it and thought that there has to be better ways around uh, this problem or the struggle that I'm going through. Um, and before uh, I trust the world, um, it was normally, oh, I can do a uh, quick job here that will help me financially. I can go ask this family member to help me out in a pinch, that sort of thing. But more often than not, whenever I went to one of these family members or friends, quite often, uh, when I went to them for help, they failed me outright. Um, either they couldn't help me because of their own circumstance, or they just outright refused. Um, but when it comes to the Lord, when you trust in Him and when you ask Him for help, He is more than happy to provide it. He will never turn you away. He will never look at you with any disgust or disdain like uh, a friend or a family member might if you reach out for help in a desperate time. He will always be there to help you. He will always be there to stretch out his hands. I was just thinking, as Jack stood up here on the platform, I was thinking of uh, the disciple Peter when they were travelling across uh, the Sea of Galilee. They saw the Lord walking on the water and Peter decided to step out of the boat and he as well walked on the water. Um, but he took his eyes off Christ for a moment and looked back towards the boat and it began to sink in the water. And <clears throat> he was struggling, he would be thrashing around in the water, he <laughs> have nearly drowned. I have, it was a terrifying experience. Um, so I can sympathize entirely with how Peter might have been feeling here. But the greatest thing Peter could do, he did. He turned to the Lord and said, Lord, save me. And it doesn't say in scripture that Jesus looked at him uh, with disdain or Jesus pondered for a moment. It says that he reached for him and he grabbed him and uh, seized hold of him. And he did save him. And like Jack was saying as well, uh, with the current climate, uh, economically, in terms of gas and electricity bills skyrocketing, I felt it family members have felt it as well. It can feel like you're, 
drowning in your problems, drowning in your burdens as well. Um, <clears throat> but when you trust in Christ, there's that peace, there's that help that drags you out of uh, that uh, turmoil. And it's always there, it's always ready for you. But you have to reach out and accept it. It would have been all well and good for Christ to reach out to Peter to pull him out of the water, but Peter had to stretch his hand out as well. He had to reach out to the Lord and grab hold of him for himself. And that is exactly what salvation is. It's that free gift that is handed out, but you have to reach out and accept it for yourself. <clears throat> And it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what sort of life you've led um, up until this point. It says, come as you are. Come as you're dressed, or whatever way you dress, um, however you are emotionally, physically, mentally, um, or spiritually. It doesn't matter. God cares about one thing and one thing only, and that is your salvation. He only wants what's best for you, and he wants to give you the best, and that best thing being his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, <clears throat> so quite often, just circling back, it's my point, um, we let our failures define us, but the Lord doesn't want to let our failures define us. He wants to allow the Lord Jesus Christ to be the thing that defines us, whether it's in the workplace or out and about, or even in our own family homes. Just think of uh, coming up for New Year's and you're thinking of New Year's resolutions. Quite the common one is uh, go to the gym and get healthier or I'll give up this, uh, give up alcohol, give up cigarettes, give up gambling. Um, but they never, they never last. But I would urge you, if you're going to change anything about your life, uh, going into this new year, and I would urge that you do it tonight, it would be that you would trust in the Lord Jesus Christ with your soul. You would trust in him for your salvation. <clears throat> and that you would go into this new year having no regret, but having that satisfaction of knowing that your sins have been forgiven and there is no distance between you or God anymore. And uh, to reiterate this point, there is a verse in Romans chapter 8. I won't ask you to turn to that. But it's in Romans chapter 8, in verse 1. When you accept uh, the free gift of salvation from God, the Son of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, says here in chapter 8, verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And that's essentially what the gospel is all about. It's about uh, salvation, but it's just as importantly about there being no animosity, there being no gap, there being nothing between you and God that can separate you. And much like Jack, I would deeply encourage you to accept this free gift. Conscious of time and the fact that Jack spoke on many things that I want to speak. So I believe that is me finished. Um, so I would just close in prayer. Um, would you like to give thanks for giving the question as well? Just okay. We'll just uh, ask the Lord for this one. Our God and Father, we come before thee in the name of thy precious Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Saviour. And Father, we thank thee for another time that we gathered around thy words. Where we could hear uh, thy son spoke of well, Father. Who, that many could hear of thy son. Father, we pray that those who have heard here and who will hear uh, the gospel preached elsewhere, Father, pray that they would trust in thy son, that no matter what difficulties they face, whatever burdens or whatever uh, uh, difficulties uh, they face, Father, that they would seek after thee and trust in thee and find peace in thee and find help and rest in thee alone. Father, we... Uh, Pray for the uh, outgoings of the rest of this day and for the rest of this week, Father. Pray for safety upon us uh, as we either gather here in the hall or as we
we head for the power. And we give thanks to you for good food and refreshment to us that has blessed us our bodies and our needs and us that there was blessed hands that together, Father. We put these things before the Son's wonderful gift and precious.